Bible says, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And that's why he's such a great firm foundation that we can build upon. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in Upon your love, and I will not be shaken, and I will not be shaken. We build our life, we build our life on you, O oh Lord. Thank you, God. Hi, everybody. We're so excited because we're in the Grow the Network campaign. And what is Grow the Network campaign? Well, it's basically we're raising the funds by taking free will love offerings so that we can invest in new equipment, Jane. Yes, we've used this technology for seven years and we really need to update the equipment because it's really very far right. out of date. And exactly. We we, uh, we know that this equipment is very expensive, being broadcasting equipment. So we really need help from everyone out there that feels the need to participate in the House of Destiny and also to be part of winning the lost for Jesus Christ. Because you know that we are here to reach the unreachable, to touch the untouchable. And you can be a part of that by helping us with this Grow the Network campaign. And I'm sure that you in turn will be blessed by helping us today. so beautiful to be with you right now. I know you're out there. I don't see you, but I know you're out there. I saw several members uh, on chat, and that's always a blessing. Let me invite you, please. There's lots of room on chat. We have an online chat. Go to our website, and you can... Um, join in that chat group and that's really 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 it's fun but it's really encouraging to hear the hellos and how you doings and bless the lords and just to see 
some of our House of Destiny family. We are family. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are citizens of heaven and we have a purpose in life. Today I want to speak life to you. I'm not the origin of that life. I'm just a vessel. I'm a messenger. A lot of people say they're cheerleaders. Well, I'm a cheerleader in the kingdom of God because I want to encourage you and I want to cheer you on. I know how important it is to be encouraged, to need encouragement. I know how important it is to just hear the voice of someone else that may not even realize how they're touching my life at the moment. And we have been so, so, I have been personally blessed I mean, I've been studying this account. We're calling this the dreamer. This is our third opportunity to be together. And I've just been reading these scriptures and meditating on them. One of my most favorite, favorite uh, characters in the Bible is Joseph. How can it not be? You know, one of the things that I shared on Facebook Live a few minutes ago, regarding this platform, regarding this ministry, and regarding our dear prophet, Kim Clement, this world is so full of problems and, and trouble. I was thinking at the gym this morning, I was at the gym, I was having a, a great day, a great workout, just thinking about life and thinking about what might happen next. And I reached my hand into my bag and went to grab something out of my bag, you know, preparing to take a shower. And I, my, I grabbed a hold of my razor blade and took, took a little sliver off the top of my finger. My day was going so great and it certainly didn't, it didn't wipe my good day out, but it was just like I thought, you know, stuff happens. In this, in this world and in this life. Now, we don't want you to focus on the bad. We want you to focus on the good. That's what I started saying just, that's what I'm saying right now just a few seconds ago about Kim. I would come to this wonderful house and knew that when Kim would prophesy, that he was gonna prophesy good news. How many of you know this world is, well, I guess you could say the church is it's full of uh, prophetic people, but there's a lot of doom and gloomers out there. And if you wonder if I believe in judgment, I certainly do believe in judgment. God is a just God. He's a, he's a God, he is a God of justice and judgment is judgment shall be but for people God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son let's remember God's heart is a heart of love for all humanity clearly for we his children of course we're his children but really all of mankind belongs to him if they would just give him their hearts and that's that's the main sense that we get from God is is his love and his acceptance even while we are yet sinners I know what I'm sharing right now is something you know most people know and it's basic but what I'm saying is people need to hear the good news because they already know how bad they are they already know how bad life is. Even as beautiful as life gets, it's challenging. We have good news to share with you today. We're gonna to prophesy of God's goodness and the future. That's what I love about Joseph, the dreamer. He was so excited about these revelations, these dreams that he was getting from God. And it had to be from God. It just, you know, there's something 
when God speaks to you, you've got to hear God yourself. Number one, you've got to hear God yourself. You can't hear from grandma and you can't hear from your dad and you just can't hear from your pastor. You just can't even hear from Kim. You've got to hear from God yourself. But when God speaks to us, it's so powerful. It might just be a whisper. Most of the time it is. But it's, it's like a good meal. It's, his voice sticks with you. It sticks with you. It stays with you. It's unshakable. <laughs> I love that. I love that about God. I've had dreams that I could not shake. As you know, one that led me right into his throne room. I couldn't shake it. I'm so glad that I couldn't shake it. Because when God gives you something, it sticks to you. Sticks to you on the inside. You read through this beautiful chapter 37 of Genesis through the end of the book. Ten words. God cre in the beginning, God created, you know, the heavens and the earth. That says it all in Genesis chapter number one. But God takes what? You know, 13 chapters to share with us about Joseph. Ten words to describe creation and 13 chapters about this man. What is it about this man? The dreamer. Do you have a dream? They tell us that we need to dream or else our sleep isn't healthy. You may not remember what you dream, but listen, God created us to be visionaries. God created us to dream, to dream his dream. He has a dream for you. Someone out there saying, I've lost my dream. It's dead, it's gone. But God raises the dead. And whatever God authors, he perfects and he finishes. He's the author and finisher of our faith. It's a powerful, powerful, powerful character in Joseph, powerful. He's the one in the whole Bible who's most like Christ. And it starts at age 17. It says, Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of one of his stepmothers and with the sons of another, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now, first of all, let me say this, that this study is really, for me, something I really didn't intend to do, but it's really taken a turn and a focus on the family. And, you know, dysfunctional families, and I want to really drive home as I already have up to this point, but it's worth saying again. God doesn't choose, as you've heard so many times, the qualified. God qualifies the chosen. He always does things so much more differently than we would ever, ever imagine. But I, I want to drive the point home. What about you? What about your family? We all have family members that we, we wouldn't want to put on this stage and present to the world. <laughs> God help us. I'm not a judge and I'm no, I'm no better than any other man on the face of this earth. So I don't mean to sound like I'm so glorious, but I'm saying, you know, we have things in our families that we don't, we wouldn't want to reveal. We wouldn't want to show off. And most of the time we exclude ourselves or we have the thoughts, the temptations, 
Thoughts that are tempting us to think less of ourselves. Again, that's why I love Kim, because he was prophesying greatness. He was prophesying hope to the, the least likely of candidates. People would walk out of his meetings feeling 10 feet tall. You don't need to hang around people that want to keep you small and make you smaller. This is not a motivational talk. This is kingdom of God stuff. But this is how God is. God places value on people. God speaks life into us. God has a dream concerning us. And I never thought that I would focus so much on the family, but I realized something, that we identify, of course we do, with our families. But would you please show me a perfect family? There's none. And this family was so dysfunctional. And the scripture tells us that Joseph brought a what? A bad report of his brother's back to his father. And then it goes on to say, so, you know, he's got some problems here with his brothers. They're out supposedly, you know, supposedly tending to the flock, but God only knows what they were doing. Joseph's responsible. Joseph's caring. Joseph has the right heart. But I just want you to see some of their dysfunction. So Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Stop right there. That's not a good thing. Of course he favored him. But when you show that favoritism and you've got 12 kids from four different wives, it's not a very wise thing to do. And he made him that coat of many colors, that tunic of many colors. And as a result, when his brothers saw this, they hated him. And they couldn't even speak to him face to face. They were so angry. Sound like some of our families, perhaps? And then Joseph has a dream. And it says, and they hated him even more. And then Joseph had a second dream. And their response is, first of all, his, his own father rebukes him. And then it says his brothers envied him. And then you find Israel sends Joseph out to check on his brothers one more time. He's always worried about his family, this dysfunctional family. Now remember, these are the families, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, these are the families that God says, I'm going to save the world by, made a covenant with. But they had a lot of problems. Does your family have a lot of problems? Where are your kids right now? Where are your grandkids right now? No, I'm not saying that to make you worry more. I'm not saying that to, to point fingers. I'm saying that to say this, God knows how to save out of the weakest, out of the circumstance situations that you would never, ever, ever believe anything good would come out of. So Joseph goes out once again to look after his, his brothers. You know, they're not too excited about him. He's got this tunic, long sleeve tunic, which means he wasn't a laborer. He wasn't any longer, you know, laboring over the, the sheep and, the, and, and their herds. He was kind of on his laptop, you know, had this nice three-piece suit on, so to speak. And they didn't like that. And it says that they conspired. They saw him coming from afar off. They conspired against to kill him. They wanted to kill their own brother. And they said, let's throw him into a pit. And they stripped him of that coat. Now, what's amazing is you see this this garment mentioned several times throughout this book of Genesis. See, God 
wants to put a robe of righteousness upon us, even though it's lifted many times by perhaps our own loved ones and people around us. But they stripped him ultimately of that coat and then they did cast him into the pit. But as his brothers were continued to, to speak about this situation, they decided they would pull him out of the pit. You know the story. And they saw the Ishmaelites coming and then just for a few pieces of silver, they sold him into slavery whereby he was taken into Egypt. Now remember, God prophesied out of Egypt, out of Egypt, they would be taken into Egypt and then out of Egypt, they would be delivered. So this story, it's an amazing story. And I, I want you to think about how, you know, I was thinking about people that have come from dysfunctional families that have really done something for themselves in God. Think about Joyce Meyer, how she openly shares how she suffered sexual abuse by her own father. Her mind, her psyche, she was destroyed. Her soul was so darkened. How could it not be? But God took someone that was abused and see how he used her in a most powerful, amazing way. Think about this. Who on television right now is capturing the attention of more audiences around the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ? You know the answer, Joel Osteen. Do you know when I look at Joel, when I listen to Joel, when I think of Joel and he's in his, in his humility and in, in his presentation, his integrity and his character, he's passed so many tests. I think about his mother and his father. I listened to John Osteen years and years and years and years and years and years before Joel ever came on the scene both John and Dodie. Just look at that family. Now there is dysfunction in every family. None of us are perfect, but you know why to me Joel shines? It was because of that gorgeous legacy. That wonderful family that he came from. Not a perfect family, but you see, we can reverse the curses that are in our families. Joseph was a shining light. No one like him. I believe in scripture beside the Lord Jesus Christ. And look what he, what he came from. You know, tragedy strikes all families. I, I thought I would share something unusual with you today but just to remind us of, of the modern family and, and where we live and what we live around. This struck very close to my home just a few days ago. I wanna show you a picture of, of an actor by the name of Ron Ely. Let's look at that picture now. And the next picture we'll show you is his character. Of course, you know Ron Ely, or maybe some of you don't know that Ron Ely was a, an actor who starred as Tarzan. There were several actors that did. There's Tarzan wrestling a savage beast. Let's go to the next picture. I'll explain this to you. I just want you to see this family. That's Ron with his wife, Valerie. Now, take a note of Valerie right there. Let's go to the next picture. 
That's Ron and his two daughters. And I just want you to know, these people live just uh, up the road from me. And these two girls played sports with, uh, with my daughter, Arena. So we would, uh, we would always see this family and speak to this family because we were on the same team together. This was many years ago when they were still in high school. Let's go to the next picture. This is the whole Ely family. Two girls and their son. And then let's go to the last picture. That beautiful, handsome, six foot, six inch Harvard football star. Name is Cameron Ely. Okay, thank you so much for that. So many of you have already seen in the news, but like I said, this tragedy struck very close proximity to my home because just a few nights ago, <clears throat> that young man, there, that family, in a very, very uh, wealthy area of Santa Barbara, home worth almost $5 million, there was this major disruption and, uh, and the police and the sheriff were called out and shots were heard and then they found this beautiful wife of Ron, Valerie, stabbed to death on the family compound. And then they found someone hiding back on the property and as they were proceeding toward the individual. He was enraged and he posed a threat to the authorities and they actually shot him to death. It was the son, Cameron, that for whatever reason was out of his mind and, and fatally stabbed his own mother to death. And I'm sharing this with you right now, not to present more doom and more gloom in your life, because I want us to pray together. And I want us to realize something that out of a most disturbed family, Joseph, God raised up a Joseph who would become the salvation of that family and really lead us, give us our Christ in generations to come after him. And I want you to realize something that God is at work even in the most difficult of situations, the most tragic situations. I know that God is going to touch this Ely family and our hearts and our prayers go out to them right now. Because of the devastation, I can't even imagine the devastation of a double funeral. And they were such a close-knit and a tight-knit family. I can tell you that out of experience. But I wanna tell you that have suffered such tragedy in your own, and abuse and brokenness in your own families that God is able to raise up a dream, your dream. So Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, Lord, that out of tragedy, it's hard, it's hard for people to believe. It's hard for people to fathom, especially as they're in that valley, as they're walking through that dark place. It's so difficult. The vision is gone. Sight is gone. There's no light, seemingly. But you are able and you, are, you will raise up a deliverer. And I'm speaking to you right now. I'm telling you right now that God is raising you up. There is a deliverer on the inside of you. God wants you to have hope. God wants you to dream. He doesn't want you to look at the incest. He doesn't want you to look 
at the murderous thoughts, at the envy, at the strife, at the hatred that's, yes, even come against you. What did Joseph do? He eventually would embrace his brothers, the ones who caused him to be shackled in the neck and the hands and sold into slavery, thrown into a pit. One day in their future, he would come back to them. He would wrap his loving arms around them. He would shed hot tears of forgiveness and mercy and compassion. And those who were not worthy to be shown mercy and love were richly provided for, were welcomed into his own home there with Potiphar, were taken into Egypt and they were given the best of the land. And Potiphar said, you don't even, Pharaoh said, you don't even have to bring your clothes and your goods, Israel, with you as you come and join Joseph in Egypt because we have so much abundance, we are just going to lavish it upon you. And I'm telling you, God turns things not inside out, but right side up. He's doing a miracle in your life, in our lives. And I want to tell you, if you feel no reason to hope, you can hope today. And if you feel like, you know, I need to find another job or I need to, you know, be a part of another family or I need to go to another church. Look, there's no perfect job. There's no perfect family. There's no perfect church. Are you sure that God wants you to leave because God wants to raise up deliverers in places just like that? Hope, 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 hope. I want to breathe it into your spirit right now. Not me, God Almighty. He makes impossible possible. He turns, he shines light into the darkest places. I know, I know people right this very moment that are in the worst situations and circumstances you could possibly imagine. I know of them personally. And part of me, you know, I don't want to encourage them because I don't want to just be someone that just speaks cliche. But I want to tell you right now, people need encouragement and they need to be spoken to and they, they need life spoken over them and life spoken in them. And we will not fear, we will not back off speaking life to people, even when they're in the worst circumstances and they're mad at God. Yes, they're mad at God. But you know what? When you have nothing left and you're tempted to be mad at God, believe me, He's the only one that you have. He's the only thing that you have. He is the rock when you feel like there's nothing, no other place to stand. It doesn't matter how depressed you are. It doesn't matter how low you are. It doesn't matter how broke you are. It doesn't matter how sick you are. I'm telling you, God will vindicate you. God will strengthen you. And God will turn it around and you can take that to the bank. <laughs> you can take that to the bank. You can. And those of us that have walked with God long enough could say, look back and look at these testimonies. Even though we may be going through our own trials and we are right now, I want to tell you something. Happy are the people that hear the joyful sound. Are you hearing the joyful sound right now? I know I can't stop, but I'm going to stop right now. I just want to cheerlead you on. I want to encourage you because that's who I am. I'm not trying to make myself out to be a great person. I'm just telling you that's what's in my heart and I mean that. I have my own struggles but I have my own victorious God who loves me and is for me and if he's for me then who can be against me? And 
the same for you. So God bless you. Receive God's prosperity. Receive God's healing. Receive God's goodness. This is all our ending prayer. Receive your miracle. And I want to tell you something. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. And you'll be happy that you didn't. All right? Write us. Share your testimony. Share your prayer, your prayer request. But tell us something that God's doing in your life. All right? Remember, we have the Israel update on Friday. And Saturday, of course, you don't want to miss the den at the House of Destiny Network. We love you. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching the House of Destiny's YouTube channel. Please subscribe to get all of our latest content. This video was brought to you by all of our generous supporters. If you'd like to give, click the link in the description. We have new episodes every week, so stay tuned. And remember, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now.